Both. Uh, Thursday, February 9th is me. Hi, I'm back. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Camp to Come to East stuff today. But first, don't forget you have a quiz tomorrow and that you've read the story and you know the bell work. That'll be on the quiz. I'll be sending out a reminder later. The story is also on my website. You can find it there. Uh, let's go with Mitchell. There's a chance I'm going to need you to go back to my laptop and hit the little side button. I don't know. It's been going back and forth. So stay there. If I start having issues, they're going to become my button monkey. And we'll go from there. All right. Just give you a heads up. All right. Button monkey! All right. No, no. Apparently you standing up was enough to threaten it. Yeah. See? I'll send her after you again. All right. On the white sheet. Take a look at that one now. I'm going to do things a little bit out of order, but only because I think that you guys are really going to want to know this information first. So I'm going to throw it at you right away. When we go to camp, you are going to be in a group of between six and ten kids. Uh, other 7th graders. You are not being led around by a teacher. You are going to have a high school kid who is going to be with you. Probably two high school kids uh, in, that are going to be in the group. They are the ones that you spend 90% of your time with while you're going around out there. You will also have a different group of kids that you are going to be having dinner, lunch, and breakfast with. We have assigned seats for the meal times, and you'll be with that group. You have a third set of kids that are going to be the ones that are going to be in your cabin. And the cabin group is 12 to 15. And so that's going to be a whole different group. Your study group, the one you spend all day with, is going to be both genders. Dudes and chicks are going to be in the different groups that you'll spend the whole day with. Um, the ones you guys eat dinner, lunch, and breakfast with at the tables, that's going to be both dudes and chicks and parents will also be at your tables. The nighttime groups, not dudes and chicks, that'd be creepy. <laughs> One, just the other. It's going to be all dudes, all chicks, and you will have parents in there. If you're dudes, you're going to have dads. If you're chicks, you're going to have moms. And so you're going to have that, and you're going to have counselors in there for the same thing, too. You get to have some influence over who's in your group. That's where this white piece of paper comes in. You get to control somewhat of who's going to be in your group. The person who is in control of creating all the groups and making all of this happen this guy. No. That's my job at camp. Well, one of my many jobs, my big one is I make all of the groupings. I put everything together. I match you up with counselors. I match you up in the groups. You get some influence over who I match you up with. That's why you have this sheet. When we go, it is the entire Heroes team and half the Stars team. Globetrotters will not be there. Any Globetrotter whose last, or sorry, any star whose last name is M through Z, won't be there. So keep that in mind. So when you're making your list on there, don't list Globetrotters. I'll simply throw yours out. And don't list any stars, last name, M through Z. I throw those out also. Otherwise, you can list any hero you want or any star whose last name is A through L. My goal is for you to have fun at camp. One of the first things <coughs> to make that happen is for you to have some influence over who you spend your time with. So... My goal is to give you people in this group. So you are going to be ranking them from 1 to 4. You are not randomly listing 1 to 4. 1 is more important than 2. 2 is more important than 3. 3 more important than 4. Which also means if you don't want other people to see this, that's fine. The only people who will ever see it are you and me. So if you have five friends who all say, are you going to put me number one? You can go, yep, to all five of them and lie to all of them. And so the only they'll ever see it, you and me, because we're going to try and avoid as much junior high drama as we can. What I do when I make my groups, I go and take a look at your list, and I look at your number one person. I go look at whoever that person is and look at their number one person. If you list each other, I put you in the same group. It's pretty much as simple as that. If... My number one, so let's say Minnie, Ninny and I, and I put Minnie, Ninny down for number one because we're BFFs forever, but me and Minnie, Ninny puts me for number one, we're going to be in the same group unless something happens, which we'll talk about in a moment. But if Minnie, Ninny puts me number four and I put her number one, you drop from like a 95% chance down to a 25% chance. It, so it drops down. So you want to make sure, if you want to guarantee, make sure your number one matches their number one. And I'm going to try and partner you up. Now, if you're honor society, or if you're a good kid I don't have to yell at, there's a chance you're going to get your number twos and your number threes, depending on how my groups work out. Sometimes you might get your entire group together. It's rare, 
but it happens. Usually the only time you get your whole group together is when I create what's called a golden group. And my golden group sounds great, but there's a drawback. Sometimes I have special kids who annoy everybody, and I have to put them in a group. So I will make a golden group of five friends who love each other, and that kid. <laughs> Y'all get to hang out together, and that kid. Because <laughs> I have to put them somewhere, so I try to offset the fact that you have that kid in your group with the fact that y'all like each other. So it's going to happen sometimes. And normally it's just going to be the two and three of you in a group or something along those lines. That's what I try to work for. Now, the only time you are not going to get your number one choice in your group is one of two things happening. One, if you are a bad kid, if you are one of my turd children who acts up and causes problems, I don't put two turd kids in the same group. The reason being, I'm not running the groups, the high school kids are, and I'm not going to give them two turd kids to handle at the same time. So if I label you a turd kid, and you rip nothing but thug one, thug two, thug three, <laughs> thug four of your friends, I can't put them together. And you go, I didn't get anyone in my group. I'm like, yeah, you list nothing but felons, so you're not going to get any of them. But if I'm a bad kid, I get no one on my list? No. Change it. Make friends with a good kid. You're like, hey, no one yells at you. Can we be friends? And you list the good kid. I'll put you in that group. But I will not put you in a group of two bad kids together. So keep that in mind. Oh, if you have to ask if you're a bad kid, you're a bad kid. Good kids don't have to ask. That's how it works. If you go, um, you yell, yeah, you're bad. It's as simple as that. So as soon as you feel the need to ask, probably go ahead and qualify yourself as a bad kid. The other way that you're not going to get someone on your list, and this is the much, much more sad version that actually happens more often, if no one on your list lists you back, which happens, welcome to junior high drama. Because if you list, and I have kids who will just list four popular kids, Bobby's awesome, Sammy's awesome, Joey's awesome, Frankie's awesome, I want to have all four of them, but none of those people list you, I'm not putting you in one of those groups because I've had creeper kids in the past. Oh like, God. I just want to go and be near popular kids. No. <laughs> like, if they don't list you, it's not happening. Plus, I'll have one popular kid that everyone loves because Bobby is like so funny and everyone loves Bobby. And I'll have 40 kids list Bobby in their number one spot because everyone wants to have Bobby. All I do is go to Bobby's list and go, Bobby listed this one kid who is none of you. Uh, and you get that person. So it does you no good to list random people. You have to go and talk to your friends and find out who's listing each other. You also have to spell their names correctly because you're going to be putting this and entering this into a digital thing where I can do a search function. If you spell their name wrong, you're not going to get them in your group. But I don't know how to spell their name. Do this crazy new thing called talking to them. You just walk over and go, hey, how do you spell your name? And you write it down. If you're not a good enough friend with them to find out how to spell their name, you're not a good enough friend to be in their group. Simple as that. Just like if you don't know what team they're on, you probably shouldn't have them as a friend either. So keep that in mind. So my goal is to give you as many people as I can on there. If you're honor society, you're probably going to get multiple kids. If, once again, you're not honor society, but at least a good kid, you're pretty much guaranteed to get your number one, maybe even two of them on there. So that's sort of my goal. I reward the good kids. If you're the kid that makes poor choices, your choices might be a bit more limited. But you made poor choices in the first place. Welcome to life. Ah, we'll come back to any questions you have about those at the end. I wanted to go ahead and cover that. You have 24 hours until tomorrow. And then tomorrow, you're going to start entering this into Socrative and typing them in there. When you finish your quiz tomorrow, this is what you work on after your quiz. You start going in there and doing tappy tappy enter enter to sort of figure out who you're going to have in your group. Uh, let's see, did that, did that, did that, did that work? Yay! Camp Tecumseh. Here's how Camp Tecumseh is going to work and why you care about all this information. But mostly, but See, we just have to threaten at the button. Like, you're really intimidating. Good job, Mitchell. <laughs> this green sheet, don't lose it. You're going to take it to your parents. You don't care about it. It's okay. It's all for them. Because I'm going to be sending out a reminder later saying, hey, I talked to everyone today about Camp Tecumseh. You should ask your kid about it. 
and they're going to come talk to you, and then you're just going to go, huh, I don't know, and, then, and you just hand them that piece of paper, and they'll be able to cover it from there. It has information for them. When do we go to Camp Tecumseh? Right after spring break. And I mean <coughs> right after spring break. As in, we go to spring break Monday through Friday. There's a weekend. Monday when you come to school, you go straight to uh, Camp Tecumseh. Like, right after. So just the way, because of ISTEP, the way it worked out, it is spring break, we take off right away. And we're gone Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Globetrotters are gone Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you have Globetrotter friends, you won't see them the whole week. Because you're gone till Wednesday, and then when we come back, they're gone till Friday. You'll only see each other through a bus window as you're waving as you pass each other on the highway. That's the only time you're going to see each other. So you'll just have to learn to deal with it for a few days. Uh, let's see. Oh, and on your white sheet, I think it says the stars' last names A through K. It changed since I printed those, so it's actually A through L. It gives you one more last name letter. If you have that one friend with that one name, go with them. Threaten you with a Mitchell. <laughs> Mitchell, go threaten it. Huh? See? Once again, I don't know what you do, but it's really scared of you. It's going to cost $135 for you guys to go to camp. I know you're not paying it. It's okay. The big people in your house are paying it. That's absolutely fine. The due date is March 10th. If you've paid absolutely nothing, it's fine. We're not cutting you yet. You have until March 10th. Any payments you've done prior to now is just making life easier, so it's not all coming due at the very end. Why do you care about this? Because you need to begin Operation Pester Your Parents. Just like you want to have a brand new toy or you want to go to the movies, you need to get them to pay. Why do you want them to pay? Because I can't make your group until I have your money. I can't form your group until you're official. So if you keep waiting all the way until March 10th, or heaven forbid you wait until after that, then I cannot guarantee your group. Your number one spot, instead of being 95%, starts dropping down to 30%, and then 20%, because all my groups are filled. So the sooner you get that done, the better. That's why you want to go home and begin Operation Pastor Parents. If you have, you write down that question, good thinking. For the parent chaperone, if you have a parent that goes, they do not have to pay. They are free. That is the joy of having the parents go. So you don't have to worry about it. But I don't want my parents to go. You do. They're adorable. But if they do go, remember, you're not going to see them very much. You don't see them throughout the day. You're going to see them at mealtime, because they're going to sit at your table. And you might see them at nighttime, depending on if they're the same gender as you. But they don't follow you around throughout the day. If you're with your group and the high school kids, you won't see them. They just go tell your parents to go play with the moose or something. <laughs> it's like a deer. <laughs> Mitchell, go threaten it again. Closer. Alright, hit it. Let's just make you sit back there, Mitchell. It's not there. What are you doing? Don't hit it. No, don't hit show. Next. <laughs> Click the arrow key. Click the net next. Well, now you have to hit escape. Here, she's hitting next. You hit the top left. Does Mitchell need help? Yes. No, no. The escape key on the keyboard, top left. Just click anywhere down there. We need more intimidation. How many advanced kids does it take to use one laptop? Let's go. Now hit there you go. All right, team. No. We're going through a lot of screens. Just sit back there and I'll just wave at you. Go on. I have faith in Mitchell now. You probably trained her. All right. What Camp Tecumseh is, it is three days of hiking in school and education, just not any form that you have ever seen before. Uh, camp is humongous. It's a mile or so of just square area that you're going to be going out there and hiking. It says five to seven. I think my groups are bigger this year, so I think we're going to be up to closer between six and ten. It's not really going to affect you guys much. And your teacher is not the teachers. Your teachers will be a high school kid. Yeah. Teachers are there, but you don't see. You see us about as often as you see your parents. Maybe a little bit less, except for me, because I like to go on the trails and hide behind trees. Uh, <laughs> but your other teachers, you probably won't see them nearly as much. Have you ever scared someone? Like, this is me trying to go to the next screen. I'm not my like, kitten playing with the light bulb. There you go. What do we do? Nothing. Um, 
a whole bunch. This is an example of one of our groups that's going to be out there being led by one of the counselors. I'll explain uh, some of the outfits that we're wearing here in a moment. You guys are going to be out hiking, moving through the woods, doing, we do science, math, English, and social studies, just never like you've done science, math, English, and social studies ever before. We're doing it in a whole new way. Let's do chemistry. One, science. Uh, when we do science, when we are there, it's not just sitting and doing stuff from the book. The way we're going to do science is you're going to be applying it to stuff you do. We have the black hole, which is the hill you're going to sled down, uh, and you have to use science to figure out who's going to go faster, because you have to race someone else. You're going to have to figure out the mass of people. You're going to be doing rock climbing. Like On so your rock climbing, you're going to have to figure out which path is easiest. You're going to be canoeing. You have to figure out how the weather is going to be affecting you while you're out there. You're going to be flying uh, giant paper balloons that you're going to make and fill with fire, and you have to figure out the directions they're going to go so you don't burn things down. That's how we use science. And so you're going to be using it, just not like the studying stuff from the book. You're going to write down your question? Good thinking. We're going to use math, but with math, once again, we're using math because you're not just using like con and sitting there with like a pile of problems. You're going to use math to apply it to how the trees are falling in different directions and angles and yeah, geometry. I don't know. Stuff along those lines. Um, we also have language <laughs> arts and social studies. Uh, you are going to have to write some stuff. You know, like what was your favorite tree? How did it taste? Why you just uh, <laughs> stuff like that? Social studies. We're going to do mapping. We're going to do geocaching. Which is where you, oh, where, if you don't know what it is, it's where you have a GPS thing and we hide things about the camp. And you have to find the things that we hide. Oh, the more you talk, the less I get through. Bring down your excitement. I'm glad you're happy. And you're going to have to geocache and map the place and find out stuff like that. You also are going to be going canoeing while we're there. We go canoeing in the sun, in the rain, and in the snow. Uh, you will be canoeing, canoeing, and in really strong wind. We've had kids that go out to canoe, and they go, like, <laughs> and your canoeing is just you pushing along the shoreline the entire time. But it's an experience. Not necessarily a good experience, but an experience. When you're out there, Mr. Broviak, what happens if we fall in water? You get wet. It's pretty simple. Uh, has it happened before? Absolutely. We're taking 500 seventh graders. Yes, one of them is going to fall in because they're special. It's okay. You won't die. You wear the anti-India rotation device. So even if you fall in, don't float and be okay. Will you know if your group falls in? Well, no. you're picking the people you get in the canoe with, so choose wisely and be fine. <laughs> if you're the special kid or friends with the special kid, then yeah, you might have to worry about getting a little wet. For everyone else, you should be fine. Also, this in the back is one of the tubes that you get a chance to sled down. That's the small one that just you can convince your counselors to do. The bigger ones are on the other side of camp that we'll get a chance to do. Uh, this is a car. Uh, this is a wild car. They come out of the woods sometimes. You watch out. This would be an example of the, the sledding in the black hole. See, it's black and there's a hole. Uh, and so that's how it works. You go down on a sled because science, you're going to learn about friction. And the less friction, the faster you go. And so some of the science things that get applied. This is a second one because you race each other because that's how taunting works. You go down next to someone and you get to figure out who's faster and who gets to win and you get to sort of yell each other back and forth. So you have two of those and it goes down the hill and pops out at the end. This would be in the process of us making the big balloons out of tissue paper. So this is the uh, making the tissue paper. It'll fill up, and then it flies up. We fill it with fire and heat, and sometimes they catch on fire, and it's scary. Uh, what you'll see in the background is the outfits that they're wearing. Uh, that comes from the counselors. Your counselor groups, what they do is they will theme your group. Sometimes it's superheroes. Sometimes it's going, here was a sombrero. I don't think they know how Mexico works, because they did sombreros and tie-dye, but I think they were just kind of special on that one. Your groups, when you have the themes, you'll sometimes battle other groups and challenge them to different events and see who can win, and different things along. It just depends on who your counselor is. My goal is to match you up to counselors that match your personality, because we, ma we have all types of counselors. My athletic -y kids, I give you my athletic -y counselors. My kids who like to sit and read, I give you my reedy counselors. So my goal is to give you the same type of personality. I read, I'm athletic. 
This would be the rock climbing. It's called Mount Wood. It's this gigantic thing in the middle of camp. So cool. There is uh, easy, medium, and hard, and you get to sort of pick which one you want to go up. If you're really good at it, if you get to the top of the hard one, there's a chocolate owl at the top, and you get to go up there, and t you get to take a little piece of it as your little prize. Behind the chocolate owl in this picture, that is one of the hot air balloons that we filled up and then fired and shot up into the air. They go all over the different directions, part of which you have to do science-wise is figure out what directions it's going to go. Sometimes you can hit the kids that are doing the rock climbing. Will it knock them off? It's tissue paper. If it does, I will mock you to the end of your life. For the most part, it's just like having a giant lightweight blanket wrapped around you, which is going to be confusing, but still fun. Isn't there fire? Isn't there fire? No. The ones that are on fire, but they'll burn up before they get to you. If not, then climb faster. <laughs> Called motivation. Uh, we do what's Square dancing while we were there. Oh, dear God. Well, it scared me at first, too. I was like, that's some straight-up hillbilly stuff. <laughs> but it turned out to be a lot more fun than I thought it was. It's basically wine dancing with a few other little things thrown into it. Um, some of the, the square dancing will require you to make physical contact with other human beings. If you are aware of the fact that boys have cooties, there is an anti-cootie station that is set up there. Uh, we have the little crisscross and you can get the shot done and make sure all the cooties go away. So okay, thank you. One of the nights that we were there, we had stories that are being told. And so we have a person that brings the stories that come in. Um, the bad news slash good news for you guys is the guy that's been doing the stories for a long time, a guy named Brad Jackson, um, who's been doing it since the 80s, for the first time since the 80s, can't make it. Uh, and so he will not be coming to our session. He can go to the Globy one, but not ours. So we're having a local author come in and tell stories instead. A uh, guy Aww. by the name of DeAndre Campbell is coming in to tell oh, you guys. Oh, I like to tell me. That's only good for you. He's a special fellow. Um, we also have one night where we do skits, and the counselors and the teachers will do little plays and perform for you to entertain you throughout the night. You don't have to participate in these, you just get to watch and laugh at these. Uh, sometimes you will participate, but not always by choice. Uh, this oh, no. is one of the kids I got pulled up on stage for something that he has no idea was about to happen to him. Um, and I'd be worried about you knowing, but by the time it actually happens, you'll forget all about this picture. I know what happened. Me too. So what do we do? A lot. It is three non-stop days while we are there. You're going to be hiking between 10 and 15 miles each day that we are there. That is how much movement we do. For some of you, you will have no idea that you've hiked that much until nighttime. And you go, this probably be my legs are tingling. I go, that's called exercise. Uh, and the next day, it's just even more of it. It's hard to get grumpy when you're having fun, which is pretty much what happens the whole time we are there. You're going to write down that question? Good thinking. Mm -hmm. Is this school? No. Yes. Yes? No. no. It is school. School rules apply. But at the same time, it's not a version of school that you are familiar with or ever really seen before. So it's a type of school that you will only get to experience this one time unless you become one of our counselors. Which is why for 30 spots, we have 150 kids who come back and interview for them because kids enjoy it so much, the only way you get a chance to do it again is on the counselor side as the high school kids, which is why we have so many kids who try to do it, and we only get to pick the best. Who is the principal at camp? It depends. We have two. Neither one is Thorpe or Butts. We bring our own principals. One, if you're really, really bad, this guy. This guy. <laughs> Um, is the one that you get to deal with. Uh, that's Mr. Fossil, mm -hmm. who is the sort of the top person who runs our program. And if you have to go to him, it's because you've gotten yourself in so much trouble, you're pretty much going to get sent home. And we do have kids who get sent home on occasion. Before you deal with him is this guy. Uh, and so that oh, will go to the principal oh. while you're there. And I know you, so what if you make me grumpy, well, then you will have issues. But me at camp is a little different than the me here. I wear my camp face while I'm there. Uh, <laughs> if that helps you out, that's much more of what you'll see if you make the wrong choices while we're there. Speaking of which... Speaking of which... Um, things that have popped up, we have very few behavior issues at camp. The main reason being, it's hard to have behavior issues when kids are enjoying themselves and having fun. If we do, yeah, I will lay down the smack hammer upon you. 
you get free time, we, recess if you will, where we have this area, we have Gaga, and they have basketball, and they have volleyball, and they have a, a, a store you can go into, they have pop machines, and, candy, and you can do all of that, unless you yeah, make me grumpy. If you throw down and cause issues in your group, you don't do that. You get to sit on a log and cry while everyone gets to run around and have fun. If I'm in a good mood, I'll give you a tissue. If not, I let it go and just run down your face while I laugh at you. So make good choices. Also, don't even bother getting into arguments with your counselors. They are always going to be right no matter what. If you come back and go, Mr. Broviak, they just killed a kid and buried the body, they had a good reason. So it's going to be, I'm siding with them every time. Why? They are you in the future. Because four years ago, they were in the exact same spot as you, and I told them the exact same thing. You want me to side with you? You come back in four years and prove that you're good enough to be a counselor, I will side with you. Till then, my counselors are always going to be right. Do we take charter buses? Absolutely. We charter these big yellow ones to take you up there, and they are super comfy. And so we're going to be taking the big yellow buses up there. Yay. With those, the boy buses have more room than the girl buses. Why? Because girls take a whole lot more stuff. And so when you get on there, the boys are going to have enough room to run wind sprints up and down the aisle. The girls, looks like a marshmallow factory exploded. To offset that, the boy bus makes up for it with lots of smells. And so it kind of goes both ways, depending on how you're looking at it. We'll talk about how much to pack, but everything you pack, it goes on your lap. So, the more you pack, the less room you have to move your little wiggly arms. So, keep that part in mind. Um, can you wear hats? Yeah. Actually, I recommend you bring a hat. Because it's going to be sunny while you're there. And so, the more sun you keep out of your face, the better. Dress code, does it apply? Yes. For the most part, I'm the one that you're going to have to answer to if there's a dress code. So, just don't bother me. Can we wear running shorts? If, as long as it's not something that gets brought to my attention and I feel the need to yell at you, I could care less. If you wear something that I go, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 my goal is not to hunt you down unless you give me a reason. Does everyone go? Yeah, for the most part, we do. We have roughly 500 seventh graders each year, and on average, we have about 10 kids who don't go to camp which is a very, very, very small percentage. We have pretty much two reasons why kids don't go to camp. One, because of behavior, but that's rare. Even if you do no homework, we're going to take you. The only time we don't take you behavior-wise is if I cannot trust you with my counselors. If you do something where I'm afraid that you're going to start a fight, or you're going to back talk them, or you're going to run away, you get written up by the principal, that way I won't take you. The only one other reason not to go to camp is cultural. If your family just believes that you're not ready to leave home and they want to keep you back, then those are the few reasons we have. Pretty much any other reason, we bring you to camp. If money's a problem, because I understand it can be, talk to me. Have your parents contact you. We have scholarships. We'll do what we can to try and help out. Do not let that be a reason not to go. Have parents contact me. If you have medical issues that you're afraid of, contact me. We have taken blind kids. Legit, she had a cane. A blind girl who went on the whole trip with us. Ashley Jones, who is the 8th grader this year in the wheelchair, she went last year. We take everything. We've had kids who have sleepwalking issues. Uh, we've had kids who have night terrors who wake up in the middle of the night screaming all the time. We deal with all of that. Whatever issue you think it is, we've dealt with it. We can help you out on this. Um, do you have to go? No. I'm not going to drag you on the bus. If you don't want to go, that's fine. But it's one of those things where... Almost every kid who goes has a good time. Do I have kids who go who don't have a good time? Yes. They're also the kids who don't have a good time doing anything. They're like, oh, I don't like breathing, it's over it. Then yes, <laughs> those kids are not going to enjoy it. I cannot make them have fun. But pretty much everyone else, it is that thing you're going to remember forever and ever. Do you pick your groups? We covered that. You get to pick a list. Now insert the whole white sheet thing. You kind of get to pick your groups, depending on who goes into it. When do you find out who's in your group and all of that? That will not be until the week before spring break. The reason being is they're not done being made until then because kids are still turning stuff in. We're still finding financing for kids who can't go. And so I will not have things finalized until then. So I can't give you groups until they're done, which won't be until that week before spring break. Is the food good? Absolutely. Um, it's like home-cooked meals. It's, I say it's like our school food, but probably better than what we have here. We have breakfast, they have cereal, like actual boxes with sugar. 
And so you can have stuff along those. They have actual things like bacon and eggs in the morning. Uh, for lunch and dinner, they have uh, one salad bar at every meal. If you want to do it. They have dessert at every meal because it's like sugar. And other than that, if you have dietary issues, we can help you out. If you're a vegetarian, they have food to get you. If you're a vegan, we have food to help you out. If you only eat foods that are red, we, are, we can help you out. And so we've had it to the extent that we had a girl who could not have food touched by other people because of her severe allergies. She had to pack an entire cooler of her own food. We did that and had her prepare it. It's fine. We cover everything. Um, are the cabins nice? They are. The cabins are big. I would say about half the size of my room. You split it down the middle is how big your cabin is going to be. And you're going to have 12 to 15 beds in there. And then you're going to have... They're stacked up. They're bunk beds. And I mean, I have a bunk bed. I Still bringing it out. You do have indoor bathrooms. You're going to have uh, sinks. You have toilets. You have hot water. You, at most part, will not be able to tell the difference between your cabin and spend the night in your friend's basement. It's going to be about the same. We don't have issues with bugs. You don't have to worry about raccoons in your bed or anything like that. That's something we have to think on in your house. Um, if you take medicines, we can got we have a nurse that goes. She gives medicines at each meal time. If you're like, I take medicine twelve times. That's fine. We can hook you up with all of those. Whatever the issue is, we can help you out. Is there free time? There is. We have the free time whenever we do the um, the recess. Free time. Well, once each day for about an hour, and if you're in a group where you actually get your work done, you can convince your counselor to actually give you probably more depending on what you get done. And there's all kinds of hidden things about camp they can take you to go find. Uh, stuff to bring deodorant. Um, once again, exercise, sweat, sweat, stink, bring deodorant. Dress code applies. Once again, dudes bring more than one outfit, girls don't bring more than three. And so somewhere in between. <laughs> Uh, don't bring soft drinks. They have a pop machine there. Bring money and you can buy it. Uh, don't bring knives. We have kids who think they're part of the Boy Scout, which is fine, but you still can't bring stabby things. Along the same lines. Um, iPods, tablets, cell phones. You shouldn't bring them. Will you? Probably. Um, here's how the cell phone thing works. During the day, you can't leave them in your cabin because there's no locks on the door. So anyone can come in there to steal it. If you take it with you, realize you're probably going to end up getting wet at some point. Either because of rain, or because you're going to fall in the lake, or because you're going to be falling into a river. <laughs> but I'm responsible. You probably are. The kid next to you is probably an idiot. And there's every chance when they fall, they grab onto something, and you go in. When your phone goes in the water, all I can do is laugh at you. So, I'm simply telling you, if you bring it, you're responsible for it. When it gets ruined, all I can do is tell your parents, yeah, you're kid's an idiot, I'm sorry. So keep that in mind when you make that choice. I'm not going to be the cell phone police. I'm not worried about that. One more screen. Questions that came up, I went ahead and put on there. Um, do you have to make up the work from when you're gone, from when you're gone at camp? Uh, no, for the most part, because there is no work. Because math, science, English, social studies will all happen while you're there. The other classes, like business or health, your classes will flip-flop. And so when you're gone Monday, Tuesday, when you come back, You'll have that same class that was gone then Thursday, Friday. So there is no makeup work that you have to really worry about. You should be fine. If you don't go and you stay here the entire time, you'll be in the library and you the same packet we do. You just, instead of going out and touching a tree, you get a picture of a tree. Instead of going out and measuring the rushing water, you get a picture of rushing water. But you still sit there and do the exact same packet. It's just without all the fun that goes along with it. Is there beauty time in the morning? Yes. We'll wake you up between 6 and 6.30. And then what? we go to bed between 10, 30, and 11. Oh, you can wake up before that really if you want to, and that's fine. If you have questions, see me. Take off. I'm